reading this morning is from Ruth chapter 4 and verses 1 to 22. Boaz marries Ruth. Meanwhile, Boaz went up to the town gate and sat there. When the kinsman redeemer he had mentioned came along, Boaz said, come over here, my friend, and sit down. So he went over and sat down. Boaz took 10 of the elders of the town and said, sit here, and they did so. Then he said to the kinsman redeemer, Naomi, who has come back from Moab, is selling the piece of land that belonged to our brother Elimelech. I thought I should bring the matter to your attention and suggest that you buy it in the presence of these seated here and in the presence of the elders of my people. If you will redeem it, do so. But if you will not, tell me so that I will know. For no one has the right to do it except you, and I am next in line. I will redeem it, he said. Then Boaz said, On the day you buy the land from Naomi and from Ruth the Moabitess, you acquire the dead man's widow in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property. At this, the kinsman redeemer said, Then I cannot redeem it, because I might endanger my own estate. You redeem it yourself. I cannot do it. Now, in earlier times in Israel, for the redemption and transfer of property to become final, one party took off his sandal and gave it to the other. This was the method of legalizing transactions in Israel. So the kinsman redeemer said to Boaz, buy it yourself, and he removed his sandal. Then Boaz announced to the elders and all the people, today you are witnesses that I have bought from, bought from Naomi all the property of Elimelech, Kilian and Mahalon. I have also acquired Ruth the Moabitess, Mahalon's widow, as my wife, in order to maintain the name of the dead with his property, so that his name will not disappear among his family or from the town records. Today, you are witnesses. Then the elders and all those at the gate said, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the house of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offspring the Lord gives you by his, this young woman, may, through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. The genealogy of David. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. Then he went to her, and the Lord enabled her to conceive, and she gave birth to a son. The woman said to Naomi, Praise be to the Lord, who this day has not left you without a kinsman redeemer. May he become famous throughout Israel. He will renew your life and sustain you in your old age. For your daughter-in-law, who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons, has given him birth. Then Naomi took the child, laid him in her lap, and cared for him. The woman living there said, Naomi has had a son, and they named him Obed. He was the father of Jesse, the father of David. This then is the family line of Perez. Perez was the father of Herson, Hezron the father of Ram, Ram the father of Aminadab, Aminadab the father of Nahalon, Nashon, Nashon the father of Salmon, Salmon the father of Boaz, Boaz the father of Obed, Obed the father of Jesse, and Jesse the father of David. Amen, and may the Lord add his blessing to this reading of his holy word. Uh, 
um, a lot of big words there. So, it is a truth universally acknowledged that a single man in possession of a good fortune must be in want of a wife. Well, you've been wondering all week after the last episode, does Boaz get the girl? And now you've found out. So you know the story so far of how Elimelech and his wife Naomi and their two sons left Bethlehem to go and live in Moab because of famine. The two sons took Moabite wives, but after 10 years, both Elimelech and his sons die leaving Naomi destitute and no children from either of her son's marriages. Naomi elects to go back to Bethlehem and her daughters-in-law vow to go with her. Now, this is not a good idea on Ruth's behalf and on her sister's behalf. Moabites, who were descended from Abraham's nephew Lot, were not part of the covenant. And there was mistrust between the children of Israel and Moabites. To take Moabites' women back to Bethlehem with her wouldn't go down well. Naomi persuades Orpah to return to her birth family. But Ruth clings to Naomi. Now, I've just got a slide of this lovely speech of Ruth. If we can have the pictures up, please. Ruth says this, Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. So, Naomi and Ruth go back to Bethlehem, just as the barley harvest was beginning. Now, in Scotland, barley is harvested in August. But in Palestine, it was harvested in the spring, a month before the wheat harvest. The two women were taken in by relatives, delighted to see them back. Hungry, Ruth takes advantage of an old law And I'm just going to quote you it from Leviticus. And I've got the next slide so you can see it. When you reap the harvest of your land, do not reap to the very edges of the field or gather the gleanings of your harvest. Leave them for the poor and the foreigner. So she goes round the edges of the field and takes her pickings back to Naomi. Unbeknown to her, however, the field's owner, Boaz, says something. A phrase that will have been uttered many times before Boaz uttered it, and many times since, including on one occasion by myself too. He looks and says, Who's that girl? A relationship of sorts develops. Ruth makes a very bold move and at the threshing floor basically proposes to Boaz. So now we turn to Boaz. Will he behave honorably? We don't know much about Boaz, but we learn at the beginning of chapter 2 that he is a man of standing. That is Old Testament code. For he's got a bob or two. 
Whether he behaves honorably or not is the basis of chapters 3 and 4. But before we can do that, we have to look at another feature of this story, that of the idea that Boaz is the guardian redeemer, the kinsman redeemer of that family. So if we can have the next picture, please. Look at this map and how the land belonging to the different clans is spread across Scotland. This, or a variant of it, will be familiar to many of you. Okay, next picture. <coughs> Look now at this second map. It's similar in style, but it, and it shows how God apportioned land to each of the twelve tribes of Israel when the Israelites moved into the promised land. These areas were allocated by God. And you can read about that allocation in the book of Joshua. You were forbidden to sell land that God had given to you and your family, your tribe. You were forbidden to sell it to another tribe to keep the family name and the tribal sizes fair was viewed by Israelites as an important part of the Exodus. So a system evolved of preserving each family's name. Even if a key man died childless, his name had to be preserved. No wonder Naomi is delighted to find that the field that Ruth is gleaning in belongs to Boaz. As she says in chapter 2, verse 20, that man is our close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. Okay, don't need the slides for just now. There's an obligation upon these people to redeem both property that might become lost to the family, but also a person who might have been sold into slavery. These duties were all prescribed in the Old Testament laws. Because God had redeemed the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt. And so no one had the right to alter these God-appointed things. Now, Elimelech, that is Naomi's late husband, had a kinsman redeemer. In fact, he had more than one. Boaz was second in line in the queue for Ruth. So let's return to the story in chapter 4. And the outcome focuses very much on the actions of the kinsman, Redeemer Boaz. He goes to the town gate, which in those days served as a combined town hall and courthouse. In other parts of the Old Testament, we read of how the town gate is where things get sorted out. To get what he wants, Boaz is going to have to play his cards carefully. He approaches the kinsman redeemer number one and invites him to sit down. He then gets ten elders to act as witnesses. What's going on? The crowd get interested. There's going to be some form of a showdown. Boaz has done his homework. It seems that there's a plot of land that used to belong to Elimelech that he must have abandoned when he went down to Moab with Naomi. Perhaps it had become common land, but in theory it belongs to Naomi. However, it really should be claimed by a kinsman, Redeemer. Boaz suggests to the guy that he buys it. He's probably aware that the land comes with strings attached, 
i.e. Naomi, but she's past childbearing age, so is no threat to his inheritance. He'll buy it. What is Boaz going to do? Remember, Boaz has plenty of land anyway. He's loaded. He doesn't really want the land. He wants the girl. And then Boaz plays his masterstroke. With the plot of land comes not just Naomi, <clears throat> but the Moabite widow Ruth. Now this is different. If the kinsman redeemer marries Ruth, he'll have a duty to get her pregnant. And that will significantly affect the inheritance in his own family. His best option is to try to get someone else to redeem the land. Will Boaz do it? Boaz will do it. Boaz has done it. They shake hands on it. Or rather, they do the Old Testament equivalent by Boaz removing his sandal. And then, in a lovely touch, the elders and all the bystanders at the gate bless Boaz. I've just got a slide again of this speech. By blessing Boaz, all the bystanders by implication, are blessing Ruth too. They all say, we are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrapa and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offspring the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. And it's interesting that they named Judah, whose son Perez was also born, by a type of kinsman redeemer strategy. Okay, I think I'm finished with the slides. Thank you. So, they marry. Ruth gives birth to a son named Obed. The English poet John Keats suggests in his poem, Ode to a Nightingale, that Ruth was homesick. He, in his poem, you get this line, in tears amid the alien corn. But no, the Bible has Ruth converting to Judaism. Remember, your God will be my God. This is not alien corn. This is her home. It's a happy ending. Boaz gets the girl. And happy not just for Boaz and Ruth. Look at verse 17. Naomi has a son. She is no longer bitter. She is happy too. The book ends with the genealogy of David. So clearly, whilst the story of Ruth, Boaz and Naomi will have been handed down orally over many generations. It's not actually written down until the time of David. So this explains the comment in verse 7 about removing the sandal, saying that that's how it was done in earlier times in Israel. And it explains why we get this genealogy at the end. It was written at the absolute earliest at the time of King David. So it's a great love story. Boaz rivals Mr. Darcy. Even if you are an atheist, you'll enjoy it. Few stories in the Bible are told from a woman's viewpoint. But this is one of them. We don't know the author, but certainly the writer gives attention to feminine values 
and feelings. In this book, there are two key words which cover the two key themes. They are kindness and redemption. In this book, we see kindness everywhere. Ruth shows Naomi kindness in leaving her country and family to care for her mother-in-law. Boaz shows kindness in first welcoming Ruth, then further kindness by acting as guardian, redeemer, and then marrying Ruth. The townspeople show kindness with that lovely blessing that I just read out. As Christians, we see human kindness reflecting the kindness or steadfast love that God shows to his people. As Christians, we are called to show kindness to others. God gives us a lead. And I quote here from the New Testament now, the first letter of John, chapter 4. We love because God first loved us. And today, in Culloden, I see this extraordinary kindness that is just littering the back of the church on our Harvest Thanksgiving Sunday. Loving because God first loved us. Loving us enough to send his Son to die on our behalf, to pay the price of our sins. Your generosity today is impressive. But none of us can ever adequately repay God for what he has done for us. The second theme is the idea of redemption, which lies at the heart of this story. By his actions, Boaz saves both Ruth and Naomi. And this action of redemption becomes more important because of the story of how David, Israel's greatest king, came to be. And so redemption brings blessing to the community and through King David to the whole nation. But if you are a Christian, redemption assumes another dimension. As a foreigner, and ancestor of King David. Ruth is a forerunner of the universal blessing that Christ's redemption ushers in. The Old Testament is full of prophecies anticipating a new King David reigning over Israel and incorporating the Gentiles into his kingdom. This new David is Jesus himself. Jesus the Christ or Messiah. Through God's promise to Abraham, all nations, not just Jews, will be blessed. Ruth, as a foreigner, as a Moabite, is an example of that. Through It's through Christ that David's throne is re-established forever. Christ's reign is universal and eternal. It is in Christ that we are all redeemed. All nations are no longer strangers and aliens, as was Ruth. Without Christ, we would for sure stand weeping amidst the alien corn. But through Christ, we are all fellow citizens in God's household. We are all co-heirs with Christ, free at last to be taken up into the heavenly kingdom where we can live forever. Praising God. Amen. So we can just send for the young folk now and we'll just say a prayer.
Heavenly Father, we thank you for saving us. We thank you that we are now redeemed through Christ. We thank you that you have paid the price of our sins, that we can now enter into the heavenly portal. We can enter into heaven because of our faith in you. And we just lift to you those who love you. We lift to you those who don't know you yet. And we just pray that we can all be together in the heavenly kingdom. Amen.